I was first diagnosed about uh, 13 years ago. The GP said, um, we've had the results back from your blood test and um, you have diabetes. I had no energy and I was breathless. I uh, saw so my GP and was immediately uh, put in the hospital. And uh, he said that we've had the pulmonary tests and etc., and that you have COPD. When I was about 20, I started taking antidepressants, the old style antidepressants that made you very tired and listless and demotivated. I'd become very withdrawn. My GP didn't know what to do. When a long-term condition arrives, you, you don't ask for it. It just plonks itself down on your life. And nothing really that the NHS does at the moment prepares you for the impact of that. And what we're doing is trying to address that. As a clinician, of course, you're brought up in a certain way, in a very traditional way, how you practice medicine, how you, how you meet patients, how you lead a consultation. And it's very much um, a culture of being in control. And Cookie Health is, the attempt is to, to shift that culture to a more collaborative approach involving the patient in decisions, in the treatment, um, shifting really the focus to the patient. The Advanced Development Programme consists of three half-day training sessions and each session takes clinicians through a particular set of skills. The whole premise of co-creating health is that it's a partnership between the clinician and the service user. Caroline was talking earlier about mm -hmm. do we want to use role play? And it's essential, I think, that within the programme that trains people, that that's reflected as well, that we have both sides of the coin, that we have the expertise of the clinician, but also the expertise of the service users as well. Can we go through this as our starting point? Mm. Well, I was approached by the programme management and suggested that I do the advanced development programme, um, which was working with clinicians. And I just really wanted to shape the way that Clinicians in my area work with people like me, sitting there and talking about how they feel. Mm -hmm. I think f for a lot of the clinicians, it might, might be something new. Yes. Than being... So much training is done clinician to clinician, healthcare specialist to healthcare specialist. And the people that are often missing from our training are the, the people that we're trying to treat. In a way, I had a lot of insight into how the practitioners thought and their thought processes. And, but also I had the insight of the patient. And for the first time, I didn't feel intimidated by the presence of professionals because I was helping them to be more professional. They needed something from me. The session today is an action learning set and the aim is to bring back together the people who have been through the ADP and to enable them to embed the learning in their daily practice. I think involving the clients, um, you know, the service users in a course with um, clinicians and, you know, healthcare professionals is really positive because, you know, it's, it has always been around us as healthcare professionals setting the agenda for the clients and you know imposing what we think they should have but with this course it sort of opened up our thinking when i do actually now see a client i ask them what would they like me to do for them as opposed to the other way around it's kind of really changed the way i kind of initiate the session i found the experience enlightening it was the clarity that the program gave me with regards to self-management teaching but also the self-management uh, opportunities that my patients would have in the future. We've had some very positive feedback, particularly from the community matrons who found that they've been able to have much freer and more open conversations with their clients and also that it's taking them back to a lot of the reasons that they came into nursing in the first place, which is to actually work alongside people. For some of the clinicians who've done the um, Clinician Advanced Development Programme, um, I think it's kind of given them permission to almost stand back and say, OK, I can't actually do all of this. It's actually up to the patient. It's up to me to work with the patient to find a solution that the patient will be able to work with. 
I lost my confidence. And I was confused. Life had stopped. And I couldn't do anything. Slowing down for some time. But I had another consultation with a respiratory consultant up in Air Hospital. And at that stage, I said to him, there must be something that I can do to have a better quality of life rather than sitting at home doing nothing. I am curious. So I'm the sort of person that wants to know about the condition and I like to be in control. It was basically a emergency call to my GP for my counsellor that she was very worried about me. My GP didn't know what to do and she had a leaflet said try this and I was very sort of ambivalent at first. Well, why am I going on a course with for seven weeks with people I don't know and but I went. Okay, so let's have a look at what self-management is then. Self-management is about recognising that a long-term condition impacts on your daily life. So you've got the emotional side, the social side, and then you've got the biological side. So the programme is getting people to recognise that all three of those are important. So good self-management is about getting all these parts of the triangle Balanced. Within the first few minutes, I knew it was different from everything that I tried before. Um, the people that were facilitating the course were one was a service provider and one was a service user, and that was the first time I'd seen someone with a situation or a condition like mine helping to change other people. And I was so impressed. The group dynamic is very key because it's not about the tutors. It's about the group learning from each other and problem solving together. And I must congratulate the trees on achieving your goals and setting them. It's not an easy thing to do for the first time. Mm -hmm. And the good part about it is uh, the weeks go on, you'll get more at ease with it and set yourself better ones as well. The programme gives you techniques and things you can use in everyday life. Breathing techniques, planning and pacing your day, setting goals. The self-management programme has also helped sort of consolidate in my own mind about balance and to provide that balance with food also comes, and I hate this word, exercise. But it, I don't see it now as exercise, it is an activity. And one of the activities which I've always enjoyed is gardening. It's very practical and it's about learning skills, seeing them modelled by somebody with a long-term condition and putting them into practice by using action plans and goal setting. The other part is about your relationship with your clinician and how you and the clinician can work together. So we spend one of the sessions where we do quite a lot on that relationship. Um, using agenda setting and preparation for the consultation, looking at medication and the questions you can ask. It really started making me think about why I'd chosen what I had in terms of what I wanted to do. When I go to visit the doctor, my relationship with him has changed in as much as I'm more comfortable sitting with him now. And I can ask him questions now. And the doctor's quite happy to explain it to you. Whereas before you'd have just accepted it and walked out. Patients who have been on the SMP who come to my consultation. And I have to be honest, some of them are transformed. It has changed their lives, really. Um, and the way we interact in, 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 in the consultation process has changed. I was quite an active person, and that was all taken away from me. Now, the programme now is, I'm back doing that again. I can put a shelf up, but instead of an hour, it takes me maybe three hours, but the point is, I get it done, and I feel confident about that, and I feel I'm achieving something through it. Instead of doing my I was that impressed with the SMP programme, asked if I could go on a co-tutor programme with it. So I did training for co-tutoring for this. Feeling good that you diversified. I feel, felt great when I, I was finished, I really did. So actually, your plan you had last week, Gloria, um, you modified it. Yes. It's absolutely crucial that we train tutors, lay and clinician tutors, in equal partnership. They go through the same training together and learn hugely about the experience of one another in that. And then they always deliver an equal partnership, so it isn't led by the clinician with an assistant. It's totally equal. I guess it was about um, taking some of my own experiences, hopefully, into this arena where I could actually 
support people and help other people who have the condition to support themselves well. Co-creating health allowed us to make self-management support programmes available that weren't available before, but importantly it's also allowed us to look at how our services need to change across Ayrshire and Arden. We've had specific training on the, the PDSA cycle, Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle, which is all about making small, rapid changes, reviewing what happens, then making another small, rapid change. And so the aim is, hopefully, you'll have lots of small, rapid changes gradually building up to a new type of service. You're encouraging and enabling clinicians and patients to make small changes, and we're just getting that momentum going, which is great. When a patient comes into the clinic, the first thing they're asked is what their agenda is, what they would like to talk about, and that's the most important focus for the consultation. To facilitate them in doing that, we've now started sending them their blood test results prior to coming to clinic, so they've got an idea of what to expect, what differences from their care now as it was to last year. Um, and we are looking at sending them also agenda sheets with possible lists of suggestions of things that they might like to talk about when they come in. Uh, I think I'd like to cover the blood test results. My HbA1c is slightly raised. When we first started, we enabled people to start their own changes. So um, different, a GP practice started testing something differently from what was happening in the hospital. And what we're now finding is that they're beginning to share some of the improvements they've tried. So there's, there's a sort of common learning, which is quite exciting. It is not the initiative that matters, it's what we learn and then embed it so we mainstream it as our day-to-day -day practice. If I am fully aware of it, I am involved, not in detail, but I understand the benefits, what's going on. I can also make sure that the NHS board is fully aware of what is going on and indeed see the benefits as we take it through the programme. What the programme is giving our diabetic team are some really good tools and techniques in terms of how to improve things and how to build towards that vision of how they want to see outpatients working, probably in a much more efficient and effective way. We've got this new ruler that we're using, new little tool. Thinking about your revised goal, three times a week, how would you score yourself now, Joni? You were a seven. Yeah. This makes a huge difference, you know. We thought this was a good idea because if you ask people on a scale of 0 to 10, if you just ask them that, how confident are you or how important is something, um, they may not be able to conceptualise it. But we're actually finding that um, working up and down this actual thing, this slide rule, is actually getting them to really think hard about these concepts. The clinician may say, what particularly would you like to talk about? Which may feel a bit strange at first, but to understand that may be a very crucial part and to change just that one small thing in um, the service improvement may make that huge difference in the communication uh, between yourself and your clinician and therefore brings a much clearer focus. When the programme ends and we know what we can learn from it, we can actually spread it to other parts of the organisation. So it's no longer a project, but it's something we have learned and gained and make sure all the good practices are actually adopted by other services. Co-creating health is increasing my ability, I think, to carry out my job properly. I see myself as a clinician, but I am increasingly seeing myself as an educator and as a coach. It's uh, enhanced the way that I communicate and even in those hardened clinicians who believe that nobody can teach me something new, it's amazing to see the change when there is a revelation in the principles that Co-Creating Health has put across. I'm a different person. I think now I'm the person that I wanted to be all along but <laughs> couldn't see out of my depression. Accepting aspects of my life will always be the way they are but I have the tools in which to deal with them.